Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. What's up, Screamerinos? <laughs> that may be... Do you know what? We've only done a couple of 2020 episodes so far, but I feel like your yeah. enthusiasm and the introductions have been better. Uh, after a very, how shall we say, low energy 2019. Yes. As long, as long as that's as long as you've made that clear tim as long as you've made that clear oh, so yes we're a horror movie podcast we talk about horror movies every week and this week this episode we are talking about headcount this is another 2019 movie now technically it's 2018 if you look it up it'll say 2018 uh, it's one of those movies where it was released in uh, a festival or two in 2018 but didn't get an actual public release until 2019 uh, so as far as we can say this counts as 2019 and uh, we're going to talk about it we'll start spoiler free as we always do we'll give you some warning before we go into the spoilers a head count uh, is a movie about uh, the character name of was it Evan was the main character. He's visiting his brother. It's a uh, break time from uh, from university, and he's hanging out with his brother. But he ends up running to this group of other university age you know students uh, who are also uh, hanging out as this is sort of big sort of uh, not a, not a park per se, but like you know uh, sort of desert area uh, that people use for sightseeing and stuff. <laughs> Why are you smirking at me? <laughs> I, just, I was like hearing you try to figure out what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's enjoyable. <laughs> I'm glad it's enjoyable. He meets some of these people. He's kind of got a crush on this one girl, Zoe. Uh, Zoe and mm-hmm. uh, she kind of seems to like him. And his brother kind of says, like, you're here to see me, but I'm not going to stand in a way since you actually have a chance with a girl. I'm going to, you can go hang out with them back at their, like, sort of, they've got a house rented for all that we hang out at. Uh, so he goes with them, they're drinking and doing drugs and doing whatever all night. And the movie is, obviously, where's the horror movie part, right? You're waiting for the, the but this is happening. Uh, okay. the, the, this is happening. Well, not you, you've seen the movie, you know where it's going. <laughs> uh, basically, when they're doing creepy stories around the campfire, he reads one, Evan reads one off of the website uh, that they're using, and it... Which, by the way, creepy camp stories have changed a little bit since my day. Now you just read them off the internet. Uh, but he he reads this one that may or may not summon something that's going to eventually try and kill them. And it, uh, I feel like it's a spoiler to even see how it works because it, it, it kind of hides that. All the descriptions of the movie, the trailer, yeah. they do a relatively good job of keeping it kind of under wraps as to what's actually going to go on and what's going to happen mm-hmm. once uh, this entity, if you want to call it that, uh, mm-hmm. is around. Uh, but a lot of the movie is kind of him being this odd p- new person to this group and there's others who mm. clearly don't like that he's there but weird st- things start happening weird things they can't quite explain and mm. that's kind of the gist of it so Tim did you enjoy yep. Headcount? Uh, you, you know this uh, this was a tough one because I, I I'll, I'll say I, I don't think the movie uh, is that good, unfortunately. Uh, but what sucks about it is I really like the premise. Like, once you find out what is going on, I think, first of all, it, I do think it kind of takes a little too long to get there. But <clears throat> once you kind of have the conceit of, yeah, what is, I, I guess, maybe kind of coming after them and how it works and, you know, how you kind of, you know, uh, like interact with your group and, and stuff because of that i think it's such a cool idea and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it and i just feel like they don't do anything interesting with it like there's a few like cool little uh moments when you realize like oh shit like this is happening this is happening but there's just kind of few and far between and then um yeah uh, it, it sucks because there's a is a, a bit of a letdown uh, honestly yeah, uh, so I'll say this. This was uh, what we did with Wounds on the same day, and Tim picked both movies, and I want to hit him for, for picking <laughs> these two movies. Uh, that said, that hey, said, I make the movies. <laughs> com- compared to Wounds, though, I will say I agree with everything you just said. I actually think there's a great mechanical concept nestled in the middle of this movie and like you say it has a couple of cool moments that are actually really creepy and like kind of like give you this potential of what it could be i'm going to say it right now this movie needs to be remade someone needs to take this yeah. concept and go and remake it because this could be a great movie unfortunately it really the, could 
the characters are dull and uh, borderline annoying in places. Um, what you were saying at the beginning when you're given the yeah. description and you said the main character's name, you're like, I think this is the main character. It's like <laughs> I could not tell you the the name of any character in this. Like I was like, oh yeah, Zoe, that sounds familiar. Maybe Max and Evan or something like that. But like it's everyone is so. Well, we've <laughs> like, we've talked about this before, haven't we? We've talked about the fact that these days with horror movies, when it comes to teenagers or college students, right? What mm-hmm. they do now is they want it to feel realistic. Uh, so yeah. they, so they don't have the caricatures that we had in the 80s and stuff the problem is mm-hmm. though is that they end up just being really dull and boring and just yeah. annoying because they're just annoying college students that you've met before in your life yeah <laughs> yeah like these guys they're like the kind of like kind of a i don't want to say like annoying but just kind of like the hipsters you see at a party that you're just like eh, i don't think i really have much to say to this yeah. guy like uh, it's like, like oh, whatever that, because they're determined not to be the, the 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 cliched elements of like movies from the eighties and nineties, but yeah. I actually prefer that over this because at least those characters are entertaining. At least they're they're they're, sure. they're funny yeah. or wacky or whatever. Whereas these characters, yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong, if you gave me like realistic characters who were really well written and engrossing and I cared about every one of them, sure, that's obviously the best case scenario. Definitely. But yeah. you're not achieving that. You're not even getting close to achieving that. Yeah. Just give us like some like big dumb jock with like a nickname like Chowder Head or something, and then like um, some nerdy dude with glasses and a calculator in his pocket, and it's like, all right, cool, good, we're off to the races. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, here it's just these are all like twenty-ish apathetic hipsters that are just like, yeah, there's nothing about them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess the asshole one, Max, is kind of the only one who sticks out because he's just more of an asshole, yeah. but that is that is it. Like, that is yeah. the extent of it. The rest of them might as well blur together. Mm-hmm. Now, given how the movie actually treats, like, the, the, the mechanic of the, the, the supernatural element, you could almost mm-hmm. argue that that could be intentional because it wants you to kind of forget how many people there are and how many there are around. That's true. Like, yeah. there could be something you could do with that. I don't think the movie's actually being yeah. that smart, though. I, I don't think it is. No. <laughs> I, I think it's just a, a happenstance, but... Yeah. You know, as but uh, I mean, yeah, it, it sucks. Cause I feel like we haven't had one of these in a while where the movie's not good, but there is something about it that's like, ah, oh, like, you know, it, it's such a bummer. Like, it's like, this is a, this could have been really cool. Uh, yeah. And, uh- I, I agree. It has been a while. It's been a long time since we've had this. Where conceptually, I can see like a ten out of ten in here somewhere. I, yeah. I, I can see if you give this to like you know director it follows for example, and you say, hey. Mm-hmm. play with this idea you take this concept and run with it like you totally. could have a god that i mean i know that sounds like a lame thing to say because like you could take almost any concept and give it to a great director and maybe it'll turn out great but like yeah. <laughs> I, I do genuinely think the concept of the way the villain if not villain's a weird word but you know like the the supernatural force like the way it works mm-hmm. is actually really interesting it's kind of like mm-hmm. it's kind of like take the thing but instead mm-hmm. of like instead of like the monster movie aspect of the thing you sort of do it more with sleight of hand does that make sense yeah. like sleight of hand the thing <laughs> if that makes, yeah. <laughs> uh, makes sense i'll get into i'll explain it properly in spoilers i don't want to get into it too, yeah. too in depth but uh so like yeah i, I have to admit i i got because it, it was frustrating because early on in the movie i was kind of like out of it because it was like oh these characters are kind of dull i don't like them it's this mm-hmm. this it's that you know wolf creek problem of the first 20 30 minutes just, oh, being, yeah. just yeah. being these characters constantly drinking and constantly like you know making jokes about the fact that two of them might want to have sex and that is like the, the extent of what's going on once I, mean, I don't even like to go to parties in real life i don't I want to see people <laughs> partying in movies <laughs> but even even once this stuff gets going though this is the thing that like, i got these glimmers of hope because a couple of creepy mm-hmm. things happened and i was like ah, ah i see what you're doing all right there's, there's, there's potential in this and then unfortunately the movie never lives up to those those little glimmers of ideas it just kind of did you know anything about it going in or no i literally never heard of this until you said let's do headcount and i said okay we'll do headcount i found headcount on netflix and watched headcount because <laughs> when uh because that's one of the reasons why i wanted to watch it you know other than it being like i don't know if it's like super noticeable no, notable but you know it's like a you know recent movie that uh we didn't get to this year uh which is hey kind of the whole point of january we're catching up with uh in uh, february in february <laughs> <laughs> and then but um but I, I heard like people talk about the premise and stuff on like podcasts and whatnot. And uh, again, like the premise sounded really cool to me. So uh, that's why I wanted to check it out. And yeah, it was like even worse knowing, you know, like what it's about because 
yeah, like 20 or 30 minutes in or whatever. And I'm like, all right, is this the right movie? Am I remembering it correctly? Because it's not doesn't seem like it's doing what I thought it was. And then, yeah, once you start getting into the stuff, it's cool. But then again, it's like they don't go far enough with it. It's, you know, very few and far between, um, you know, like w- what you want. And uh, man, just such a bummer. And the premise actually changed for me at one point because there was a there was a again a cool idea at one point of uh, mm. what it was doing, and it kind of changed after that. To, again, something that was equally cool, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm not. I guess if I think about, it, I understand why there was a mistake. Uh, the character made a mistake in thinking something happened at one point, mm-hmm. but uh, like conceptually, there's so much potential in here, and mm-hmm. once the concept is actually put in the table, the characters do seem to kind of like. Like, they have a couple of moments where they're kind of concerned about it, but they don't really believe anything's happening. And then, yeah. by the time it gets to the you know the final act, when stuff's really going down, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the main character being aware that something's going on comes once again back to the, the research and internet uh, scene where oh he, he looks something <laughs> up and he finds, like, previous, like, potential victims of this thing. And that it's so like, painful. Yeah, why, are we, we... why are we doing this? Yeah, we need to put a you know memoriam on that. Like we, all right, the you know googling you know your problem in a horror movie just it needs to be done. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, imagine, imagine, I, mean, I compared it to the thing kind of. It was very different, but imagine mm-hmm. if in the thing, like halfway through, Kurt Russell whipped out his laptop <laughs> and googled, uh, you know, alien who can like you know look like yeah. someone else, and they found you know yeah. like it just it, what's annoying about and of this? Of course, like you know the exactly correct page pops up yeah. like first of all <laughs> and what, what's really annoying about this in particular though is that this concept doesn't need it this concept you could easily mm. do this this mechanic and have the characters realize after the first time something happens that something's wrong and have them learn about what's happening just through the action of it happening and get and let yeah. the mystery build the fear and blah blah blah, blah. Like, like i can see like I, I hate to watch a movie and say I can write a better version of the script, but I genuinely think I yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, you bring up a good point too, like when you say like how yeah, no one ever really seems too concerned about it. Like I, yeah, I think that's like a big problem uh, with the movie because the you know the excitement should be when you realize something is wrong, and then that's when everyone has to figure out what the rules are and how they can, you know, circumvent the rules and stuff. But yeah, like you said, it's kind of just one guy being like, Hey, wait a minute. And then most people being like, Oh yeah, you're right. But Oh, well, never mind. Now you're crazy. Let's just keep partying and stuff. Like it, it, it never feels like, you know, anyone is feeling the danger or anything until kind of like right up to the end where all of a sudden it's like everything like, you know, breaks off. But even then, like people still don't really care. Like, yes, the sad part is, is this is better than the other movie we watched today, right? It's better than Wins, but it's almost more. Yeah. F- it's almost more frustrating because I can see this being ma- amazing, and it's not. I agree. I agree. It's it, yeah. it's 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 so frustrating. Yeah, uh, these these were two interesting movies to do, like at the same time, because yeah, neither one like you know again like on technical levels you know, weren't necessarily poorly made or anything, but they're both like kind of big disappointments. And and I guess for, you know, different reasons uh, for each one, but still it's like similar feelings at the end of them where it's just like, oh man, that was, (laughs) that was not what I was uh, hoping it would be. I do think that this one probably has the weaker acting of the two, but I think this one has the better technical direction of the two. I I think this one has, there's there's one thing it does that I thought was a bit like over the top was where it kind of like, it almost like the camera went through the door into the the house and it, it felt a little okay. bit showy and like over the top to me but yeah. other than that i feel like it had a distinct look to it i felt like it had a, mm-hmm. had a feel and then once the creepy stuff happens like those one or two creepy moments one of them is really good and it's all mm-hmm. just how the camera what they do with the camera and uh shadows i think and i stuff. know which one you're talking yeah. about yeah. and it's a really good moment and it almost made me think oh maybe this movie's about to get great maybe the last like 40 minutes of this mm-hmm. is going to be amazing and i'm going to like forgive the the the, the, the time <laughs> that we spent kind of getting there yeah uh and unfortunately it didn't but oh man yeah yeah at the very least though i was definitely like more invested in this movie Mm-hmm. like you know it's a and, and again yeah it never gets to where i want it to be but at least i was like you know more long for the ride i guess yeah no, that's a fair way of putting that uh so yeah we'll get, we'll get, we'll get the spoiler warning here i guess we'll get spoilers i will thank our patreon producers though before we start mm-hmm. that uh david short alison m four days Sandy palacious and tyler hess 
so the, thanks to them those are patron producers for the month that means they are patrons at the 20 dollar or more tiers uh you can go and support us on patreon of course you don't have to do it for 20 dollars or more you can do it for as little as one dollar and for that one dollar you get access to an exclusive bonus episode every month there's a whole back catalog of them now at uh, the five dollar tier of course you also get uh, access to voting on an episode once per month and you get a couple of the episodes early uh, as well so go and have a look and see if you're interested in any of that uh, any any patrons uh, basically support all the content and keep everything coming and make sure we can uh, play games on our switch or whatever tim's doing i don't know what he's doing there <laughs> if you follow me if you follow me on instagram you can see the picture of my cat i just took <laughs> uh so professional uh never... you know i don't re- <laughs> you know i don't respect our patrons I Oh dear! All right, so uh, full spoilers for. <laughs> kidding, of course. Just kidding. <laughs> I love how you, you didn't have the balls to, to just let the joke lie. Yeah, to just no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I want everybody to know. I'm you kidding. never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so full spoilers for head count here. So let's talk about the concept because mm-hmm. the con, the con, the core mechanic mm-hmm. of this. So the first mm-hmm. thing I thought was happening because there's a scene where they're going out the, the, after he spent the night, and Evan mm-hmm. says, "Where's the blonde girl?" And they're all like, "What are you talking mm-hmm. about?" There's, what blonde girl right and I thought there was going to be this neat idea where they were going to start disappearing one by one and no one was going to even notice like everyone's going to forget that the, pers- the person existed except him and I thought that's why it was called head count because people kept mm-hmm. were going to keep disappearing um now, the implication, I think, based on where it goes is more that the, the blonde girl who was there was not really part of the group and he was just seeing her because uh mm-hmm. she, she was there to blend in uh, before mm-hmm. but, you know, be- before the thing started doing its main th- you know its main uh you know doppelganger yeah. shenanigans right mm-hmm. so basically the way this movie works is that this entity this this demon or like alien or his g or something they're calling it yeah his g yeah because there was text at the start but that, that was something mm-hmm. both this and moons had in common they both start with like a paragraph of text at the start yeah uh, and again like a like i said with wounds i watching on a small tv <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting back, was, it starts with text and i go oh all right so i had to pause it and then go up and read it uh but then it annoyed me because someone recites that exact text like later on yeah. in the movie i was like god damn it like <laughs> it was unnecessary uh, i was just imagining tim Lee like an old man going sorry enhance <laughs> sorry enhance <laughs> and then grab my walker and <laughs> idle up to the tv <laughs> oh dear so th- so basically what happens is is that this thing will be a doppelganger of someone there right it won't take over it's not like the thing where it's replaced the person but mm-hmm. they'll they'll be pretending to be someone in a scene where there's a group mm-hmm. of them um and the, the, this this scene that i'm about to talk about is my favorite moment in the whole movie and it was the, what got me excited for the whole thing uh, about halfway mm-hmm. through is that you know i think six of them are sitting playing uh, uh, Never Have I Ever or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And they're taking drinks and whatever. And there's a sort of the nerdier guy, and I guess I'm just saying that because he wears glasses. <laughs> more than anything. Yeah. But he he's like, you know, part of the game. And there's this moment where all the uh, the lights turn off because behind them, the, the sort of door to the kitchen's there. And a couple of the others like sort of walk in from the kitchen to the, the doorway. And one of them is this guy with glasses. And there's a moment where you can see both of them standing there and I'm like in the foreground they, and the lights all go out, right? Uh, in the in the main room. And mm-hmm. everyone's sort of confused and they get up and they go over and talk to him. It's like, hey, and they sort of realize after a second, that's weird. You were just sitting over there. And what mm-hmm. I love about this moment is that they said, for a lot of this playing out, you can still see the, the silhouette of the person, of the, the, the sort of the, oh, yeah. the fake him sitting yeah. there in the foreground. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I thought, this is actually a really good doppelganger movie where the thing is mm-hmm. banking on the group being split into parts and it can you know can yeah. be with the other like half of the group if the other one's over there and this mm-hmm. moment got me excited because i thought oh mechanically this is a really interesting thing for horror this idea mm-hmm. that it can kind of almost stealthily be there the whole time and people will be interacting with it as long as it's not all 10 of them in the room at the same in the one go right yeah um and even then it may appear as uh, evan's brother who comes by at one point that might have been him at, you know mm-hmm. at that moment yeah, no, it, it's really great. And even like, you know, kind of break the scene down a little bit, uh, you know, like it's really, really good build up because, you know, as they're playing, like it seems like they're all kind of sitting on like one side of the table or mm. whatever they're at. And it's kind of like the camera's slowly panning like back and forth between everyone, like almost like 
you know, feels like um like Paranormal Activity three, you know, like the oscillating fan where it's oh, like sure, yeah. Yeah, it's like going back and forth through everyone, so you know something's gonna happen and yeah, I kept waiting and then uh yeah, like you said, I, I think it ends with like someone you know, it's focusing on the guy, then someone like asks him a question or whatever, like they say, like, hey, uh, Tom or whatever. And then you see the other one like poke his head out of the kitchen door. And then that's when the lights go out. And it's like really well done. And yeah, it's like you said, this is like the best scene in the movie. And this is what you want the movie to be like. They should have gotten to this, you know, in like 15, 20 minutes and then explored the hell out of it mm-hmm. for the rest of the movie. And the, the, it, just, it doesn't. <laughs> the rest of the movie after this, it should have been earlier, but the rest of the movie after this should have been them, like, being concerned that they can't trust each other. That yeah. sort of, There's a doppelganger in the room. And there's a small moment here where Evan, who sounds kind of crazy, to be honest, because there's not been enough to really suggest that there is something supernatural, but he's like, yeah. hey, like, what if there was another like you know mike or whatever his name is sitting there and what yeah. if he's still in the house and they go sort of looking through the house and but when they don't find anything they just kind of give up and that's it like yeah. and that's the end of it um and because because ultimately what this thing is trying to do is it's trying to make sure they're split into two groups of five because for some reason mm-hmm. it can only do its thing when there's a group of five people yeah, it um, says it's like power comes in fives or whatever, says it. Okay. Yeah. So, and there's, there's 10 people in total. And it, it makes a good point of reminding you that because it, it mentions that Zoe's the one, the only person in the original group that's only that's single. Everyone else is in a couple. Mm-hmm. So, Evan being added on is her like potential new sort of partner. And they, they, mm-hmm. they do, they have sex and whatever. They seem to be hitting mm-hmm. it off. Um, that means that gives us 10, obviously, right? So, uh, yeah. I, I thought it was A kind of like squeezed in at the end this whole idea of. Uh, like what it's trying to do even though the idea that once it has five people in a group of five that it'll make them all commit suicide is, is genuinely mm. quite creepy it is um mm. but i don't know if i needed it like honestly the idea of it being just there like <coughs> imitating one of them and like sort of again the whole idea of it being called head count because there's one extra person that shouldn't be there right mm. like simple and, but, and, and i kept like wanting them to incorporate that like i kept wanting them to be like all right we got to start like you know like taking uh like head counts and making sure there's mm. like you know five like five of us here or how many are here and then and then you can play with, with that idea where they you know then maybe there could be when there's like less people or more people and like wait a minute didn't we say there's this many or whatever and then you can or, see like paranoia uh, and tension yeah but... or even uh if they're split in two groups like let's say they both or both groups do a head count and like they're on the walkie-talkie or well, I say walkie-talkie their phones or whatever and they say hey yeah we've got six over here and now because yeah. yeah we've also got six like you know, yeah. like wait, yeah. that's one like, too many. Like one of us has got a got a doppelganger. One of us has got the extra person. You know. Yeah, and um, then like someone can mention something about like you know, oh, like you know, well, Mike thinks this about like, oh, wait a minute, Mike's over here or something, and then like yeah, you you know, would like get like some good like scares or something like that. There's so much uh, potential, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's crazy that they, I don't know that they didn't incorporate it because it's not like the other thing that's great about it is. Um, it's potential that you don't need money for. Oh yeah. It's not, you know, it's not like, oh yeah, we would have loved to have done this, but that would have cost a million dollars. It's like, no, this is such a simple, easy concept uh, that you could have done. <laughs> like, there's no reason why they couldn't have done it. Yeah, no, I or played with it more. I, I like because the big review, the big revelation moment of the movie is when they're going out to these mines. And we find yeah. out that Zoe, who, and we'll talk about the Zoe, the scene where Zoe gets hurt at one point. But oh, right, right. Zoe st- stayed behind, uh, or, but we didn't think she was staying behind because the doppelganger, as Zoe presumably, mm-hmm. tells Evan that she's going to go in the other car and she'll meet yeah. him there. And then when they arrive there, she's not there, and Evan kind of freaks out, and then realizes, wait a minute, how many people are left back at the house? And it's like five, and he's like shit, and he grabs the car keys. And he drives back. So this is the big revelation where he's like, oh shit, something's wrong because we've left. And to me, this was like, we didn't need this whole left with five bollocks. Like, I mean, it's not yeah. it's not terrible on its own. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's like, the revelation should be from like realizing there's too many people or realizing that there's yeah. so, you know, some other entity around. And um, like, honestly, for, for this movie to work and be effective, I think we had to get to the point by the halfway mark where everyone knew and believed there was an extra person. Totally, and, yeah. and they had to like be trying to figure it out amongst them and not trusting each other. Like that had to be what this movie was. And you know, it's it, it, it's funny. Like you mentioned the thing before, but like imagine if the thing like no one ever realized that there's an alien there. That like yeah. you, you know the whole movie, people are just trying to go about their like 
you know, jobs and someone just kept being like, no, I'm telling you, there's an alien that's taking people out. Like, oh, come on, you're crazy. Well, like, that's a, I mean, that's kind of the appeal of this, right? Is that this could have went unnoticed. And just mm-hmm. luckily, they kind of caught it out with this this one moment where yeah. someone shouted like, "Hey, you know, Mike," and then the, you know the real yeah. one popped his head around the corner. Like, mm-hmm. if that moment hadn't happened, they would never have like sussed it out. Like, yeah. that, that that's kind of the creepiness of it, right? That it could have just mm-hmm. it gotten away with it, right? But, um, yeah, yeah it's rough. Now, uh, so going back to to one thing you mentioned, the idea of okay, so once it. Uh, like uh actually this is another thing i was confused about does does it just want to kill people or does it want someone to be a vessel because because it seems like that's what ends up <clears throat> happening to the, like the main character in the it, end, I guess yeah he's... it will it kind of happened to zoe as well because when they showed up after oh, right, when, yeah. when, they, when they rushed back zoe still i mean obviously you think of angels by the doppelganger um mm-hmm. but Oh, I mean, hell, maybe at the end, though, it's still just a doppelganger. Maybe the doppelganger is just Evan at the end. That's true. Um, yeah. So it sounds like it takes the form of one of the victims so that it can then go and do another batch somewhere else, yeah. right? Uh, but the uh, the idea, though, of, like, so what it, like, uh, I think, like, another cool thing is you're kind of, like, wondering, like, all right, what does this doppelganger want to do and stuff? And then, I don't know, I don't like the suicide angle. I think that's just kind of like a, a boring place to take it like I, I never really like um like suicide curses in movies like i don't like when it's an entity that makes you kill yourself like i, I don't know that's just not something that, that appeals to me and then um or like if you are gonna do it at least maybe have the kills be a little more like interesting and stuff like i feel like you know we yeah i mean see a lot of the kills until like I the end it just kind of I didn't hate the the fact that when they come back to the house, when like everyone rushes back, that there's like a lot of like aftermath stuff. You don't see any bodies, but you see like a fork in the the wall socket, and you see like a toaster in the yeah. in the bath. And I thought, mm-hmm. okay, I kind of like the the chaos that this is kind of implying, but I don't mm-hmm. necessarily again love where it's going because it, it doesn't it doesn't feel necessary. Like we could just mm-hmm. have the uh, the entity doing. I don't know, just I like killing people, feeding on them, whatever it's doing. Like, I mean, yeah, pick, sure. pick, pick a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But instead, it's this convoluted five-person thing, which I mean, doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but uh, yeah. it, it just it feels so unnecessary given like how much potential in the concept there is. And because because mm-hmm. there's that there's that moment um, with with Zoe, which we should talk about, where they're uh, so it's after the the weird thing with the the two of them at the, the you know in the house, but they're they're out taking photographs the next day they're up on sort of rocks and he's like uh, evan's kind of bonding with like the stoner dude and they're just kind of talking about stuff and in the background and it's like it's an effective little moment where zoe just kind of like it's almost like she just slips off the edge of the rocks and falls down like you know 30 feet um yeah. but it just kind of happens in the background really kind of like slickly it's, it's not like she stumbles and falls over it's like she just kind of like it's almost as if something just popped her out like by a foot and she just dropped um, mm-hmm. But not, 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 it didn't look like she got pushed out. It wasn't like she got, she went out like top first. It was like her entire body mm-hmm. just kind of went slip like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and they go down and all freaking out. And she's got, you know, her legs broken or whatever. Um, kind of mm-hmm. weird not to go to the hospital, to be honest, after this scene, but whatever. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it was an effective enough moment. And it made me go, okay, so why did the thing have this happen exactly? Is, mm-hmm. it, is it just a ruse so that it can trick them into splitting two later? So that one's like has to stay home, but she can like pretend that she's going out with the others or something. Um, I don't know. It, it, man, I that's that's maybe the most frustrating movie of twenty nineteen because it has so much potential. Yeah, I think like the big thing I wanted to ask you too, because you know obviously you're known for you love a you know a movie with rules and stuff. And do you think that this movie? effectively like set up rules for this entity and then uh or do you think it was kind of just like a little haphazard nah it was was, was haphazard as you say Uh, but i think this is something that could have had rules and could have really benefited from the rules um yeah yeah because i I think like it seems like what the better version is and like you know you said earlier is yeah we don't spend as much time like you know in 15 20 minutes we find out what the entity is what's happening and then we kind of establish some rules and again like you know the movie is the people trying to you know work around the rules to yeah, stay to, safe it has to be them constantly staying in groups communicating who's who and who's where 
um you know like uh, i mean there's just naturally a lot of rules maybe you could add on some extra ones like maybe they find out i don't know like it mm. can do certain things so there's maybe like you know loopholes to exploit or something like that like exactly um, yeah. like th- that that could be something to, to play with and that would be adding extra stuff onto it uh, that obviously we've not thought of but like i, f- mm. I feel like th- there's just <sighs> <laughs> oh. there's just there's so much you can do with this there's so there's so much you can do with like the idea of like uh, that that shot of the extra version of him sitting in the foreground and no mm-hmm. one's noticing him uh is yeah. so good and like i just i wish the movie really just stuck to that idea it feels like they had an idea and i said this about wounds as well it just it feels so undercooked it feels like they had a great yeah. idea and they, they they you know knocked out a script mm-hmm. and i'm like you know, look at it again. Think about how much time you're spending just doing more of the uh, the awkward. Like Evan doesn't fit in here. Max kind of is making yeah. fun of him or or being you know passive aggressive. Like think about how much time you're spending on this shite, mm-hmm. and think about how much less you could have, and how much more of the time you could spend on ha- having more of a game of cat and mouse in the house. It's mm-hmm. not even that big a house, you know. It's just like a holiday home with you know maybe five bedrooms. It's not yeah. huge, like in the surrounding mm-hmm. areas, you know. Um, yeah. And imagine, like, the cool stuff you could do where, like, you know, that, like, you could rewatch it and then notice, like, something in the mm. beginning where it was like, oh, there's an extra person there. Like, I didn't even realize at the time, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm. um, it, it, like it does like a roll call when he first meets the group. Mm. They kind of all, like, say who they are and say hello, yeah. uh, which I think is very intentional. Um, mm-hmm. So like that could be something because the first time something creepy happens he's in the hot tub with zoe and mm. she kisses him for the first time and they hear a noise and they think they see someone in the distance and i'm like yeah that's the perfect thing you start this with and then once they get in the house then we realize whatever this is is come in the house right and we have this doppelganger and yeah. like i mean notice how much time we're spending talking about what this movie could be and not what yeah. it is <laughs> like yeah uh, yeah it's it's because uh, uh, there, there's so much more interesting stuff than it could have been and ultimately what it is is just like dull and like you know with the exception of a scene here and there like uh you know i mean that big scene we talked about like that is like you know really like an, an amazing standout scene in the movie but then so much of it else is just is very dull and i don't care yeah it's very about this guy's relationships and stuff yeah the whole thing is very generic the, the, i mean the the arc of the movie for him is meant to be that he kind of ditches his brother to come and uh be with these people his brother comes to try and find him like on the second night and says hey i thought something bad happened to you and we find out that their parents are dead and his brother kind of raised them he's, he's kind of a weirdo yeah. um um i did sympathize with the brother at one point because the brother doesn't like drink alcohol or anything like that and when he says that like max is like oh like it makes like, a little stark <laughs> comment and i'm like as someone who doesn't drink i'm like oh okay i'm on this guy's side now <laughs> like, <laughs> screw you max but uh like and i think the point of his character arc is that at the end of the movie when everyone else has been killed uh and he's on his own he's the last one left and he phones his brother and he's begging his brother i'm so sorry like please come and get me it's basically i think the idea that he's kind of taking his brother for granted and he's not mm-hmm. he's, he's meant to be spending this weekend with his brother and he's not he's he's he's, he's ran off and spent it with other people and mm. he's not appreciating what he has in his life and who he has in his life and at the end yeah. of the movie he's kind of realized that he should have paid more attention to that um but of course the movie ends with his brother coming picking him up but it's not really him it's the doppelganger who's now going with him to meet his friends because his brother's like hey i'll introduce you to my friends mm-hmm. and evan's like that's perfect because he's the doppelganger yeah. and he's going to feed on them mm. say how many friends did you have again well uh I guess if we were meeting three of us and then, uh, well, I guess me and you, that would make five. <laughs> no, it'd have to be four because the, the doppelganger doesn't count as one of the five. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I've got four friends, two couples, we're going to be two couples and me makes Ooh, five. Perfect. Yeah. Mm, five people. Oh, my favorite. That was... <laughs> I don't know what that was, but I liked it. Uh, what? <laughs> what was the i think i might have missed something about this i don't know if they explained it or if it was part of the google search that he did <laughs> yes. but um what was what was the deal with like the line there was like that like a certain line that you could go up to that the thing would have power or wouldn't have power or whatever oh yeah i i actually didn't really notice an explanation for that either it just it became clear in the final act that there was this line that once they arrived over the line again they were trapped inside like 
the okay. perimeter because obviously later on when Evan tries to leave and crosses over this line he just mm-hmm. kind of loops into another like it, it mirrors the whole house and the surrounding area mm-hmm. and we see that if he tries to leave he just loops back into it um yeah. and that's that's, I mean, that's fine whatever but uh yeah it Again, never... i feel like it sounded like it could have been maybe a little more interesting if i guess maybe play with it more as a little context like i don't know it just kind of seemed like a weird like okay this is a thing now yeah i don't know if you need it but i mean that's the sort of thing that you could have done like maybe after they realize let's say in our version where they realize the doppelganger sooner uh they yeah. try to just run away but they can't and that's what traps them there so they have to deal with it right yeah because unlike yeah. The th- unlike the thing it's not the weather it's not the snow they're not in the middle of nowhere like i mean they're, they're fairly secluded but they can still drive somewhere right yeah, uh, yeah. but this explains why they can't just run away uh they could have used that for that sure but um i don't have an answer now i don't know exactly what the rule was there um they, when you looked up the uh, possible previous victims of this thing there's like this little girl who survived but again i don't think she did i think the whole idea is, is that the doppelganger will pretend to be a survivor of the, the five that died to then that know, makes sense, pass yeah. on um uh, i mean part of the little riddle the little uh, rhyme that he says uh, it says mm-hmm. oh you've already seen it before that kind of ties into it being a mm-hmm. doppelganger the idea that it's that it's going to hide in plain sight with someone you yeah. know which is fine um oh, man i'm so frustrated <laughs> <laughs> i'm so frustrated like this this yeah. you know like in- instead of like them like understanding that something's wrong and trying to figure it out mm-hmm. we get a generic scene of them like just looking around to see if there's an intruder and then they just assume that the stoners like basically spiked all of their drinks that, that's oh, what yeah, that's yeah. what that's what their their assumption is um yeah and i don't like that the thing leaves a symbol behind like you know obviously at one point evan sees this symbol in the like in this little hut that's next to the house and then later on yeah. it's like sort of formed on the table with the, the cups and stuff like i don't need yeah. i don't need this generic haunting shit like that's not the fun yeah. part of this the fun part of this is the doppelganger and how it's going to like infiltrate and like mm. trick them into thinking it's with their friends and not and mm. whatever uh, and unfortunately it does the bare minimum of that when it should be the <laughs> entire concept of the movie yeah yeah, oh, man, it's a it's a shame. Yeah, I wonder if it was even like I don't know a, a thought when they were making it or anything. If they you know realized that like oh no we like we have this interesting thing. Why don't we explore this? Like it's it's I don't know. I mean maybe we just have really specific tastes, but I feel like most people would probably look at that and be like oh no that would be a more interesting direction to go to. I mean I would like more interesting and likable characters, sure, but. Like and yeah. that and that would really put it over the top if it was like what we are saying plus that. But even if these characters were the same, but they just went heavier into the concept, I could get I could be fine with the characters just because they're there for sure. the purpose of the story. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I don't care about the characters. The concept is whiffed on, and as a result, I I'm left just upset. I'm upset that it's not yeah. done what I wanted to do. Well, I mean, luckily they remake everything nowadays. So <laughs> hopefully, in two years we get a yeah another version of this. Because instead, it's just them going in group outings uh, to the surrounding areas, or having part or playing party games, and they're kind of awkward. Or at least Max is kind of awkward with Evan, because it turns out he's actually Zoe's ex. The others are kind of nicer to him. Uh, it's just mm. generally kind of awkward. But he, him and Zoe keep flirting and are basically to, like, by the time they, like because the end of the night they have sex and then the next night they also you know sleep in the same room again. So it's, they're clearly just essentially a couple at that point, or at least for the weekend. Yeah. Um, mm. But there's so much of just like him being with this group as they're doing things for their vacation week and they're still mm-hmm. you know like they don't get scared enough to not think they're on vacation anymore until the very end of the movie which is frustrating mm-hmm. but hey <laughs> that's head count <sighs> <sighs> how many heads are you counting out of 10 mm. <sighs> it's a, this is a tough one because again like I see, or I say that you have a you have a great concept. So, if you have a good concept, but then you don't do anything with it, is that like, do you, should you get like less points or more points <laughs> for that? Yeah, <laughs> uh, give me a good amount of points for the concept, but then <laughs> since you totally beef it, uh, I don't. Know, do I take more points away or? Uh, that's tough. Um, I don't know. I guess you know. I'll go as 
high as a four, <laughs> which I, which I still feel like, you know, I mean, uh, you know, four is not like great, but uh, obviously, but like, I, I feel like it's still being a little generous, but you know, I'll, I'll give it enough for, you know, the concept alone. And at the bare minimum, at least that one scene, you know, is very memorable and will stick out to me. Like when I think about the movie, so at, at the bare minimum, I have that, but you can't really give it much else. Like, you know, yeah, the characters aren't great. The, again, they just really fail to live up. What's a really cool concept. And unfortunately ends up being a little boring because of that. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am pretty much in the same boat. Um, I'll stretch to 4.5. I'll stretch to 4.5 because the concept's so good. I just, yeah. they need to do more with it. They need to just focus on the concept because uh, mm-hmm. the concept's great. Uh, yeah. It's such a shame. It's such a shame. I, I mean, I think like, you know, you mentioned like It Follows earlier. Like, I feel like, you know, this could have, if it was executed properly, I, I feel like this could have been It Follows. Like it could have been a really cool, but very simple concept but it's one that's like you know very memorable and people will be talking about well, it yeah that, that's that's yeah. what it follows did it was this simple idea of this ghost keeps like following you no matter what mm-hmm. after you've had sex with the person who was infected before mm-hmm. and it just it, it, as that movie goes along it, okay so how does it handle it when it's just her that knows about it how does she convince her friends once her friends know about it what do they do they mm-hmm. run how can they try and tackle it is there any way they can try and see it is there any way they can try you know try and fight it it just it progresses naturally through the concept where it keeps challenging it with the, the okay well, how can we mess with the rules how can we do this how can we fight yeah. how can we survive in this movie, the characters don't even know there's something to survive from until the last 10 minutes. Exactly. And that's so frustrating. And I guess we didn't even really talk about it too, but like, it, it doesn't even feel like there is any way for them to fight back because then once they realize something's going on, like everyone just automatically kills themselves, but it's like, you know, it's like something kind of just snaps their fingers and they are like, it doesn't matter where they are or if they're looking at the doppelganger or what, it seems like they're just powerless to do anything. If- so they're just like... If you're going to stick with the whole five person thing, then then the, the, the rule would be to make sure we're never in a group of five, right? Um, yeah. I would probably change that though to be like you can't just be alone with it. So you always want to be at least a group of three in case one of you is the uh, the thing, right? Yeah. So sure. like so that that could be how you fight it. Like that could be the rules. But again, the movie just doesn't ever even have to worry about it. Yeah. So. <sighs> Man, oh man. <laughs> Damn it! So much. What could have been? So much potential. Uh, but there you go. That is uh, that is head count. You can let us know what you think of head count if you've seen it in the comments below. You can like and subscribe. You can get us on the twitters at Screams Midnight. Uh, usually good fun on there. Tim with his bad photoshops and whatever else uh you can of course support us by rating the podcast on apple Podcasts. more people find us that way of course you can have more people find us by just sharing us on your own social media here there's this horror movie podcast it's kind of not terrible go and listen to it uh you can do that uh you can support us on patreon of course we mentioned patreon.com slash tv earlier uh but of course you get access to exclusive episodes you get to vote on episodes you get some episodes early all these things go and have a look and see if you're interested in any of it um but yeah, so as well, you can also you can get a Screams After Midnight shirt if you want, uh, or spread shirt store. There's a link in the description. So uh, go and have a look at that. Uh, but otherwise, that's us. Uh, check out other content from Alphas TV, Sci-Fi Movie Podcast, the Atomic Cinema Experiment that I do with Tara. Uh, there's also uh, TV reviews and uh, comic book podcast comments from the Multiverse. Uh, I did that with uh, Connor and Matt. Uh, so go and have a look at all that stuff if you're interested. But uh, that is us. That has been Headcount on Screams After Midnight. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we will see you next time.